Everyone is in all available units. Respond Union Street in the area of 14 for our structure fire. Attention all units, all available fire units, respond Union Street in the area of number 14 for a structure fire. Reports of people inside. Responding 26 Union Street, reported structure fire. Everyone is out of the house. Show you responding at 159. My name is uh, Kevin Winship. I'm a firefighter at the Water Street Fire Station. Hi, my name is Brian Sawyer. I work for the Haverhill Fire Department and I'm a firefighter. Hi, my name is Todd Jumper. I'm a lieutenant at the Bradford Fire Station, Engine 4. What we do, we come in and our shifts are 24 hours long. They go from 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. the next morning. We come in, we clean the station, check our equipment. Uh, we make sure everything's there. If not, we replace oxygen if it's low, and we check our medical bags and whatnot. Make sure there's water in the truck. Make sure there's fuel in the truck. If not, we go get that. And then we usually do training. Come back, eat some lunch, do an afternoon training, and then eat some dinner and go on calls in between everything. Before anything comes into use for us, we all get trained on it. So we all have a class, whether it's the rep that does it or someone always teaches us how to use it before anything goes in service. It doesn't come natural for me. I have to sit down and, like when we do training, some of the guys kind of really get it. And being over here by myself, I don't have somebody I can work with during the day. Um, so I kind of have to have one of the guys from um, Water Street come up who's really good at it and he can help me out with it. We can call someone on the fire department that would know. You know, like we have a training officer. Hopefully, and if he couldn't figure it out, then he'd have the, the manufacturer's rep come in and show us something if we have a question. For like the crew sense and um, firehouse, those are from an outside agency. And we have a couple guys that work with them. And then they'll come in and then they'll do the training with us. But anytime we need training, we can always call down Water Street and one of the guys will come up and, and help you out. I believe that technology is very important in the fire department along with a lot of other things. We have a weekly checklist that we go through all the equipment and make sure everything's there. And usually the guy that you relieve will tell you if something's missing or something's broken. The truck itself, make sure it is in pump gear and it was ready to go if we do have a fire. We have a CO monitor which we never had when I first got on. So if your furnace is backing up and you don't know it, like all houses have a carbon monoxide detector in them now. We have an actual monitor that tells you what the percentage is. So we get a call, we'll go in there and make sure the carbon monoxide levels are safe. If not, we have to get them out and find the problem and go through the appropriate actions. We also have uh, defibrillators that we save people's lives with. You know, we zap, you know, zap them um, when they have a heart attack or whatnot. So that's, to me, the defibrillators, the automatic defibrillators are the, a key that really helps on a medical call at least. If we're doing search and rescue, we can use thermal images to locate victims or use it for finding hotspots in different buildings. But the ones that, when I got hired, they were like old and outdated, so now we have ones that are a lot better. So they work better, you can see better with them, whether you're looking for a victim or other things. Well, it's like a heat sensor, so if, if, if there's a fire inside a wall and you can't see it, you, you scan the wall with it and it'll show you hot spots. And so it helps you find fires and if, it could be an electrical wire on fire that you don't realize it. And it's putting smoke out and someone smelled it and you don't know where it is. So you don't have to rip the whole wall apart. You can just isolate where, you know, the hot spots are and whatnot. And so it's something like that is pretty good. So in the front cab of the truck, uh, the lieutenant has the incident view um, iPad. 
and it's something that we've really just got into in the last year or so, and it's kind of continuing education for us. The, the maps give you an overview of the entire area. It allows us to know where hydrants are, streets. Yeah, it helps with apartments. Apartment buildings can be numbered. We can figure out where standpipes are, fire department connections, lock boxes, even on individual homes that have um, key locks, um, knocks boxes. We can set those up on there. We can set up, say if somebody has a keypad to get in the house, we can put the keypad numbers in. It also allows you to see the direction that the other trucks are coming in. So if you want to, instead of bunching all the trucks up in one spot, you can look at them and you can figure out a different area to go or a different way to go so that you don't get all backed up in, um, on certain smaller streets. When I was on the ladder truck a few years ago, the technology would help me because I'd be able to, that truck's being so big, you don't want to go down smaller streets. So by having the incident view and seeing the way the other trucks are going, you can actually blow that area up a little bit and I would take the truck in a different direction or go to a different side of the building. Whereas, you know, before we had something like that, you would just kind of focused on one direction and that was it. It helps with a lot of information that we don't have to get on the phone or on the radio to go back and forth between dispatch or the deputy or something like that. It gives us a pretty good plan of what we're going to be doing and it's fairly new to us and we're just going throughout the city right now doing um, building the building. We go around do building tours to familiarize ourselves with the building and the hazards in the building. Then the officers write up a report, it gets put in the incident view so they can pull it up on the iPad on the way to the call. So then we know the hazards going in instead of, you know, years past they didn't know, you know. When I first got on, we had a map book and it was hand drawn. So you were only as good as the guy who, had, who drew that map book. Um, so in order to find a hydrant, especially in the middle of the night, we'd have to look at the map book, flip through the pages on the way to a call, and find a little dot, figure out where it was. So now when we go on a call, we have our pad, we have the streets, there are two different views you can do. You can do a, um, it's like a street view, where there are no homes, they're just little blocks, and they'll have the hydrant, or you can do a, uh, I think it's a satellite view, and it gives you like technology, it looks, it's like looking down from the sky on, um, on a regular neighborhood. You see the trees, you see the cars, you see everything. But it also gives you, an X where the hydrants are, a red X. And it'll tell you if that hydrant is working or not working. We had a call going down Kingsbury Ave down here, it was probably four or five years ago, and uh, the hydrants are really stretched out. And again, you're flipping through a map book trying to find a little dot in the middle of the night, and when you get older, you can't see that good at night. Um, and there was a car parked in front of the hydrant, and we missed it, and we had to turn around and come back and get it. But if we had the um, incident view at that time, you know, we would have, we would have pretty much known right, right where it was. It cuts down on the lieutenant's job quite a bit because you can just look at something and see it instead of having to flip through a book. Um, the, yeah, the more technology we get, it, it, it makes the job faster and safer, I think. Uh, my name is Guy Cooper and I am a patrol officer assigned to early nights and days. When the initial call comes in, the 911 call comes in, we answer it uh, on the police side. Fire departments sit behind us. Uh, they listen in, or they, they call it barging into the call, so they listen into the call. Uh, if the call is a police matter, the fire department just stands by, listens. Um, if this sounds like there may be an injury, whether it be an assault or anything to that nature, um, they, they know ahead of time so they can dispatch proper needs of either a fire or ambulance. Um, if it's a medical call, we stop talking generally. Fire department takes over with it and they, what they call EMD at emergency uh, medical dispatch, they ask a series of questions um, so they can kind of determine what the medical is and at that point they'll dispatch proper um, ambulance and fire, whether it be an ALS unit or a BLS unit and we'll also dispatch a police. With the new technology and having now uh, fire dispatch in our dispatch too, so we can listen in and we can, instead of calling on the phone, we can just literally turn around in our chair and talk directly to fire dispatch and let them know what our needs may be or they can let us know what their needs may be face to face instead of over a telephone line when they were in a different location. And then again, they're listening in on everything that we do on 911. 
and we're listening in on them, so it just works together as one unit. It, a response time, um, again, medical-wise or an emergency, any type of emergency-wise, instead of having to go to the state police, having them figure out where it's coming from and then do a transfer over to us, a fire only takes seconds to go from a small fire in a house to the whole house going up. So having them come directly into us now, it's, you're cutting out the middleman is what you do. It's just you get the direct call and now that everybody's kind of working together and you got enough dispatch, people listening to one person talking, then someone's already dispatching out help what, prior to us putting anything in and actually dispatching more units. To send help to where people may need it, it's, it's, I think it's very important that we have this technology now and it just gets better. I think every year it just gets a little bit better, a little bit better and they, they are enha enhancing certain things of it. So uh, with that being done, I mean, the, the, you're getting emergency services quicker and quicker responses. Um, again, when it's, an, it's a medical and they're still on the phone with the caller, we've already dispatched a car. So at least they're getting some type of medical well prior to the call even going out to their people. Yeah, the more technology we get, it, it, it makes the job faster and safer, I think. Technology is getting better and better, and it's safer for us the better technology we have. The more information you have on any given call is better for everybody, for the total outcome, for safety and everything. Like I say, it keeps us safe. The newer stuff keeps us more safe every year. They come up with something, so that's why it's always good to have new technology.